All right, let's get to the spindle alignment. Uh, the turret is basically squared away, so now we can worry about this, the alignment of the spindle. So the first thing that I want to do is use the the ID tool holder to figure out where the where the spindle is on the center line, and hopefully it's going to be pretty close. If it's pretty close, then uh, we don't have a lot of work to do. Uh, if it's reasonably close, we'll take a test cut with the spindle and we'll figure out if there's a taper. And depending on how the taper looks, we'll make a plan as far as how to adjust the spindle in order to get both the taper to zero and the center line to zero. So, a lot of people have a lot of different ideas about how to check the, the center line of the turret to the center line of the spindle. Most people, I think, prefer to use a coax indicator. That should be fine. Um, yeah, use the coax indicator mounted in the, you know, mounted in the spindle, and just uh, sweep in the inside of one of your boring bar holders. That that would work just fine. Uh, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm actually going to use this thing right here. That's a sleeve that is an adapter for a Morse taper. And we're not going to use the Morse taper feature of it, but I'm basically going to use this sleeve like a test bar. So, yeah, I'm just going to mount that into the into the uh, boring bar holder, just like so. And then I will do one. I'll, I'll put one on the opposite side of the turret as well. And just like with the stick tool holders, we'll check you know the spindle center line with with this holder we'll rotate the turret 180 degrees check it with the opposite side and then we'll make a comparison between the two because no matter what we do there's always going to be some slight variation between the two holders so we want to try to kind of balance that so I'm going to get these mounted and I'll show you how I actually make the check okay we're going to give this a try what you're looking at is the back of the boring bar holder this is the face of the chuck I've got the indicator, you know, set up on the face of the chuck, and I'm just going to do a sweep, and you'll see what's going on. This is a tenths indicator. Every one revolution of the dial is ten thousandths. There. So, what you can see is that indicator made two full revolutions from the top to the bottom of the tool so there's one there's two so what that means is that we have 20 thousandths total indicator reading TIR now that means that our tool center line is off by half that so right now it's a off by ten thousandths and uh, it's actually high by ten thousandths well that means that what we need to do is move the spindle the spindle center line so that we can get that center line to come out correctly so uh, since the since the tool is high that means that we need to move the spindle center line in the horizontal plane this way out towards the outside of the machine and that should lower the center line of the tool so let's figure out how to do that okay we're looking at the side view of the machine and uh, what we need to do is we're gonna have to remove this panel right here and it's got uh, screws from the inside of the of the headstock area from this direction and then it's got screws in from this direction from inside the machine doesn't look too bad I, I've, I've tried to make this adjustment before on different machines without removing the sheet metal and every single time I wish I, I had wished I would have just gone to the trouble to remove the sheet metal it's so much easier on this one I snooped around I don't even think it's possible to get to the adjustment screws without taking that sheet metal off 
So I don't think it's going to be too bad. Plus, I'm, I'm confident that somebody's taken this panel off before. And of course, you can always tell when somebody's taken something apart before because the lazy bastards didn't put all the screws back in. All right, the panel's off. It wasn't pretty, but uh, I got it off. Okay, here's the side of the head, the headstock. And uh, you can see these are the hold down screws. And then these right here are the plates that are used to adjust the, the headstock, you know, on the horizontal plane. So you got a socket head cap screw here, socket head cap screw here, and a set screw here. So obviously the set screw pushes that way. The socket head cap screws pull this way. So that's what we're going to use to adjust the location of the, of the spindle. Now, we need to move the spindle this way towards the outside of the machine. The problem is, I really don't know how far to move it. And I also don't know if the spindle center line is aligned with the Z-axis. So, we're just going to move it a little ways, go back to our indicator, and uh, see how we did. Then we'll take a test cut and see how the alignment is. And then, you know, like I said, we'll just go back and forth until we get it right. Now, something that's kind of, uh, kind of interesting to me. Check out this, uh, this hold down screw right here. Yeah, that's the, the hold down screw for the spindle that's closest to the wall of the machine. So the chuck's right on the other side of that. Now this red thing right here, that's for the parts catcher. And uh, you can see the cylinder right there. But you can also see that it nicely obscures that screw. And I have no idea what, what Romy's uh, you know, plan was for that. I don't like to bash engineers, you know, I've been in that position before, but that's a pretty poor design. Now, luckily, I've run into crappy designs like this before, which is why I have this. That is a 14 millimeter hex key, and it's been cut off, relieved on the backside, and basically made as short as humanly possible. And there you go. There's only about an inch of clearance on the top of that screw, and uh, this wrench will fit right in. I actually made this wrench, if I recall correctly, to do an alignment on a Moriseki SL20. Same kind of a deal. One of the hold down screws for the turret was obscured by the actual casting of the turret, and no way to access it. And yeah, there's just no excuse for this kind of crappy engineering. They could have solved this problem for free, or, or essentially zero dollars by just taking this socket head cap screw out and putting a regular hex head bolt in. You know, if we had a hex head bolt there, put a regular 12 point wrench on it, not a problem. I just have no idea why they would do something like that. Anyway, that's what we got to work with. So, yeah, sometimes you gotta make tools. Okay, I've been working with this for a little bit and uh, I've made some, uh, some discoveries. I think that this uh, device right here or clamp right here is not supposed to be adjustable um, basically <clears throat> I believe what they did is that they ground this to fit when the machine was originally built <clears throat> and this basically sets the center line so this one back here that has both the push and the pull screw is designed to basically rotate the spindle around this point using it kind of like a pivot and uh, if that's the case then it's going to make things a lot easier so basically uh, we needed this, the uh, center line of the chuck to come out so what I did is uh, this this point right here is I don't know maybe 10 inches behind the chuck so I actually took this screw and pushed the back end of the tailstock towards the back of the machine. So I rotated the spindle center line. And I've got the, uh, the center line now good within about uh, just a few tenths. So I'm gonna lock it down and we're gonna take a test cut. And the test cut is gonna determine whether or not the, the center line is parallel to the Z axis. If that's the case, if we don't have any taper in the test cut, then we're gonna be ready to go. If we do have a taper in the test cut, then it's going to get a little bit more involved. And probably what I'm going to have to do is, is take this 
uh, clamp off and regrind it either from the uh, from the side where it mounts to the fixed portion of the casting or the side where it mounts to the actual spindle itself. So we'll uh, we'll go take a look at the at this the sweep and I'll show you how how good we're doing there. Okay, I don't know how well you'll be able to see this, but this is the the sweep of the spindle center line after I've made the adjustment. So, yeah, that's uh, that's pretty damn good. I'd say it's within two tenths right now. So, like I said, the next step is to take a test cut and uh, basically just see where we end up. Okay, here's another look at this uh, the setup to test the center line. And uh, yeah, you can see the this the sweep right there. So the setup that I'm using, I've got this little Mighty Mag uh, magnetic base, and my indicator is mounted directly to that Mighty Mag, and there's no there's no arm, there's no long uh, moment arm, you know, to cause some kind of deflection. This is what we want. We want an absolutely rigid setup because I don't care how how much you paid for your Noga fancy arm. If you hang it out there, even just you know three or four inches, it's going to droop. Meaning that when the indicator is on the top side of the bar, it's going to read say zero. You flip it over, I wouldn't be surprised to see it droop ten thousandths. And you just cannot make an accurate measurement that way. Got to have something super rigid like this. Okay, we're set up to take a test cut. This uh, is a piece of two and a quarter round bar. I believe it's 1045 cold roll. The maximum cutting di distance that we have is going to be about seven inches. Um, so I'm going to try a, a test cut. We're going to start about a thousand RPM and I'm just going to feed by hand. I'm not going to write a program. There's a uh, yeah, no reason for that. So let's let's see what we end up with. This is the, that's the factory cut end, so I might have to make a couple passes at it to get the thing to clean up correctly. Okay, I think that's enough to uh, to make a useful measurement. Okay, uh, now we've made the test cut. These are the results here. So at the far end of the of the bar, I had 2.2228. At the chuck 
side of the bar I had 2.2024 so it's uh, 20 roughly 20 thousandths uh, larger at the far end of the bar so that means that the, the headstock is out of alignment so we, we've got our center line good but we need to take this this far end of the of the bar and move it back towards the back of the machine half the difference so uh, be ten thousandths roughly speaking and that will get us to where we want to be so what I did I'm gonna try to kind of use a little bit of math to figure this out I took some measurements basically what we want to happen is that we want this point right here this is about an inch away from the face of the chuck that's where we swept in the center line we don't want that point to move it's perfect right now and we want to keep it where it is but we want to move this point right here which is six inches away ten thousandths towards the back of the machine so I just took some rough measurements it's seven inches to the firewall three inches from the wall of the machine to the first uh, clamp this one right here and then eight inches to the second clamp that's the one that has the push-pull screws so this is a kind of a simplified diagram and it explains what I want to do no movement here ten thousandths here these are the various distances so uh, presumably if we pivot about this point th these two points here are also going to move towards the back of the machine uh, roughly the same amount but it doesn't really matter we don't care if the spindle moves this way or that way ten thousandths won't hurt anything so we can further simplify it down to this little diagram right here so if we assume that that point is fixed right there that's where we swept in the center line and six inches away we want to move ten thousandths we can use a simple proportion which is what I've done here to figure out the distance that we need to move these other two points which is this point here and this point here so if I moved the fixed one seventeen thousandths out to the outside of the machine and this one thirty thousandths out towards the outside of the machine what should happen is this point should stay the same and this point should move ten thousandths back towards the back of the machine so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna cut a couple of shims and get myself seventeen thousandths underneath this right here this is the fixed side support for the spindle then I'm gonna probably set up a dial indicator right here so I can see what's happening with that point Then I'll set up a second dial indicator right here over the the adjustable side support and I'll pull this one over seventeen thousandths I'll pull this one over thirty thousandths and then probably I'm gonna set up a third indicator right here on the test bar and just make sure that it doesn't actually move because that will destroy our center line that we spent so much time setting up earlier so like I said this isn't an easy process having this headstock on a horizontal plane makes things a lot more difficult so if I get the shims under here and everything looks like it's good and I get this adjusted to where I want it I'll probably take that fixed bracket off and grind 17 thousandths off of one side and set everything back up and it should be good to go so I'm gonna get some indicators set up it's probably gonna take about all the indicators I have and then I'm gonna set up uh, cut some small shims and we'll see if we can get this thing pulled into where we want it to be okay I've made a few more uh, adjustments and test cuts <clears throat> and I've got the the taper down to a thousandth and a half over seven inches so 0 0.0015 on the diameter so that means that the actual uh, taper that the machine's cutting right now is half that so about seven tenths over six inches and it's a little bit still it's still uh, larger at the at the out end and smaller at the close end so we, we can accept some some uh, taper 
but if anything we want it to be the other way we want it to be a little bit small at the out end uh, just because the tool pressure is always going to try to push the bar away from the tool so if we had the taper running a little bit uphill towards the tool then the tool pressure you know they kind of counteract and you know that'll make it a little bit better so I went ahead and set back up to check the center line it's still pretty pretty close uh, right now the tool is about a thousandth low so I'm getting pretty close I'm within seven tenths on my taper and about nine tenths on my center line so I'm gonna figure out how to make this last adjustment and hopefully we'll make uh, one more test cut one more check of the center line and we'll be ready to go okay this is the last check of the center line I've got the taper down to two tenths over the length of my test bar. I'm calling that good enough. This is the sweep of the center line using my indicator again. And uh, yeah, I don't know how well it shows up on the camera, but we're within just a few tenths. I would say about three tenths. So I'm gonna let that go. That's three tenths total. So, you know, our, our theoretical uh, our theoretical center line to center line is only, you know, a little over a tenth. So it's a little bit more on the on the opposite side station. I did check against that one, you know. So we just tried to balance them, and uh, we're going to call that good enough. Okay, this is the uh, indicator setup that I was using when I was doing the alignment of the headstock, and everything's everything's where I want it. And all the hold down screws are tight. So, uh, my personal feeling is that these adjustment screws, the side push pull screws, when everything's where you want it, you should go ahead and back those off. There's no reason to leave those, um, you know, bearing because, like I've been trying to say, you know, with all these systems, the machine's gonna crash. That's inevitable. When it crashes, we want things to move so you know if we were, if we loosen these screws maybe the machine just slips on the hold down bolts and you know we avoid breaking the base casting or you know bending the spindle or some some traumatic damage that could possibly result so i am not going to go ahead and grind uh, the step in this this uh hold down clamp over here i'm going to do the same thing i'm just going to loosen the the screw and put the sheet metal back on and we'll call this a, uh, a completed job. Okay, I think we're all done. I've got the turret all reassembled with the disc in the middle. All the sheet metal is back, you know, where it's supposed to be. The rear cover's on. Where, uh, you know, we ended up within a few tenths on, on all of our alignments and that's, that's good enough. That's what we want. Uh, I'm not sure I'm gonna do the tailstock. Uh, or if I do, it's going to be the subject of a separate video. And uh, like a lot of things on this machine, the tailstock is different than uh, than what I'm used to seeing. So let's uh, see if we can zoom in on that. So there's the tailstock ways. Now look down here. See that little block? That one right there. That's a uh, a push-pull block, kind of like what we saw on the headstock. And uh, what that does is actually moves the or adjusts the entire tailstock ways. So yeah, normally the tailstock would have a, a two-piece design where the base, you know, the 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 tailstock can slide side to side on top of its own base. <laughs> on, on this machine, they chose to actually make the entire tailstock way adjustable. And you probably can't see it on camera, but underneath the, the tailstock ways, there's a set of shims. So, yeah, I guess they were just, they must have been super lazy when they, when they machined or ground the, the base casting for this machine. Because, you know, everything is set on shims and everything is adjustable, uh, which is fine. Except uh, I think it probably hurts the rigidity a little bit, but, you know, tailstock isn't going to be going to be used that much so it's probably not a big deal 
Uh, like I said, I uh, I would like to, to check the alignment of the tailstock, but it's probably going to be, you know, in a separate video. And it'll be pretty simple. We'll just use a test bar. It's not really any different than than uh, checking the alignment of a tailstock on an engine lathe. So so uh, yeah, in this red tray here, that's all the tools that I use for this for this job. You know, you you don't really need a, a huge amount of tools to to do an alignment like this. You're going to need a good set of indicators. You're going to need a good set of mag bases. You know, a nice set of hex keys, some hammers, some punches. You know, just basic stuff. You really don't have to, you know, break the bank as far as as uh, tools go. So one thing I wanted to talk about was this indicator that I was using to check the center line. So this is a Federal uh, WC21 is the model number, and this is a tenths indicator. But what's cool is that it has this uh, sub counting dial right here, and so every one revolution of the big hand is ten thousandths. And every one revolution of the small hand is a hundred thousand. So this indicator actually has a range of of like three three seventy five. So yeah, it's a tense indicator with a three eighths range, and uh, it's super handy for work like this. You know, the problem with most tense indicators is that they don't they don't have any range. You know, they're ten thousandths or or twenty thousandths maximum, or even if they have the the sub dial. Maybe you get 80 thousandths or something like that. But yeah, this thing is awesome. And unfortunately, I think we're going to have to say goodbye to an old friend. That is a Stanley uh, Compo Cast Dead Blow Hammer. These were like, you know, the original Dead Blow Hammers. And they're still being made. You can still buy a brand new one. You know, this thing's probably. Well, I've had it at least 15 years, and it was probably 15 years old when I got it. But uh, I think it was just too cold. And, yeah, it was sitting in my truck all night. And when I brought it inside and hit something with it, it just it just split open. So, yep, time for a new one. Okay, our alignment is complete. Like I said, you know, we got, we just got everything as close as we could. And you might be able to, you know, find the specs for your particular machine but you know just try to do the best that you can you can't ever get them perfect you know like I said there's always going to be some variation and you know machines have been abused or crashed or whatever so you just do the best that you can and uh, you know I, I know that these videos have gone on and on and on there's a lot of content to cover but you know once you do this job a few times it's really not that hard this machine you know like I said it has some some tricks and some curve balls that uh, horizontal mounting of the spindle, you know, having to set that center line, that, that's an additional step that you normally wouldn't take, it, you know, and that costs a lot of time. You know, normally, you know, uh, uh, an experienced guy on a, on a small machine like this, I would say you could do this alignment complete after a minor crash in three to four hours. You know, it's really not that hard. There's a... Uh, you know obviously crashes can vary and if there's actual damage all bets are off but if it's just a bump and everything got knocked out of alignment you know there's no taper pins you know your way you know around the machine you done a few before yeah this is a pretty simple job and uh, you know it's intimidating at first but hopefully you know you can glean enough information from this video to to muscle your way through any any kind of machine you know alignments are are uh, you know a tricky process a lot of times you just have to try things you know I did some math on the headstock and, and tried to you know move things the way I thought they needed to be moved in order to get things just where I wanted it didn't come out perfect you know you, you do the best you can and you take a, che a check you know Based on the results of your test, you, you do your next move and you check it again. And that's what you do. You have to iterate until you get to the final solution. So that's it for this this uh, portion, the spindle alignment. Like I said, maybe I'll make another video about the tailstock. Uh, I'm not sure. 
I need to investigate that a little bit further. I haven't seen that style before where the entire tailstock way is adjustable. There's, uh, you know, really nothing to it. So, um, chances are that it's probably fine. Normally, tailstocks aren't going to be involved in a crash, but we have moved the spindle around a little bit, so it would be good to check the tailstock because, you know, that that relationship you know is everything as far as the tailstock goes you know the spindle center line to the tailstock center line so we need to, to check it out and I need to check the the ways themselves too and also make sure they're parallel to the z-axis so that's gonna be it you know try to try to power through all the videos like I said there's a lot of content you know normally you wouldn't have to level the machine normally you wouldn't have to you know pull the turret and check for the taper pins you know those things are good so all you need to do is you know take your checks loosen the things that need to be loosened knock them around until they're in the right position tighten them back up and away you go it's really not that hard